1963, Dr Andrew Burditch and a group of scientists embarked on a mission to tag and track Australia's most critically endangered reptile, the Western Swamp Tortoise. Fifty years on to this very day, Dr Burditch headed back through the Allenbrook Nature Reserve to reunite with the very tortoise he'd tagged, known as Number Four. Number four was probably at least 15 years old in 1963, and uh, which makes her over 65 years old now, and she's still able to lay eggs. In fact, she's going to lay five eggs this year. Despite conservation efforts, there's still less than 50 adult tortoises in the wild, but that number is slowly growing. A good result, considering the reptile was thought extinct for 113 years. Up until 1953, and a young boy showed up to a, uh, a meeting of the WA Naturalist Club with his pet, and uh, they realised here was an animal that we had thought had died out. Uh, quite a remarkable story. There's a good reason why sighting one of these tortoises really is so rare. They go underground and sleep for the entire summer and autumn months. But one thing is certain, the passionate group of conservationists will continue their work to help the prehistoric species exist for another 100 million years. It's an amazing fairy tale story for WA conservation. There's still a lot of work to do, but it's really good today to acknowledge that 50 years of hard work. Alicia Banner, 10 Eyewitness News. There's only 10,000 left in the wild, which makes Borden's black cockatoos one of Australia's most endangered species. Well, we know so little about Borden's cockatoos. These cockatoos generally live in, um, down south in the forested areas and they're very hard to follow. But now WA scientists are using new technology to take action, attaching satellite tracking devices to the birds. We've put satellite transmitters on two Borden's cockatoos which have been treated for injuries and undergone rehabilitation at Carrickon and are now being released back into the wild. We've never tracked this species before. No one really knows on a day-to-day -day basis where they go. Over the coming months, researchers will monitor the cockatoos every move. It, it's important for us to know where they go, what habitat they use, um, where they feed, where they roost. The hope is by learning more about their habits, WA scientists can help save the endangered species. And we know the population is declining. Uh, this species is threatened by habitat loss. Also vehicle strike and competition with other species. But their biggest threat is illegal shooting by orchardists. The DEC estimates around 200 Bowden's cockatoos are shot each year. Population modelling shows that if the deaths continue at this rate, the creatures may be extinct within our lifetime. The two cockatoos were released back into the wild yesterday evening in Kelmscott. Researchers are already recording data on their movements. Alicia Banner, 10 News. Right, little guy, off you go. Back home, where she belongs. She was rescued and nursed back to health after becoming entangled in fishing line a month ago. Unfortunately, every year, hundreds of native animals suffer far worse. Uh, we've had five dolphin entanglements uh, reported in the Swanning Canning River system and unfortunately four of those dolphins have died as a result of an entanglement. That is a horrific way uh, for any creature uh, to die. Fishing hooks down animals' throats where it can't be retrieved because it damages the trachea and the animal has to be euthanized. So this is a proactive approach to stop that. That proactive approach, these simple boxes placed at popular fishing spots across the city. On a daily basis, the native animal rescue team are out here on the water finding entangled wildlife. But they say the initiative is already proving successful. In its first year, the reel it in boxes have collected almost nine kilometres of fishing line and 1,700 hooks. Fishing line that could have otherwise ended up in the Swan and Canning River estuary system could have ended up entangling some of our wildlife, some of our dolphins, some of our black swans. Now the project is being expanded. These fishing line disposal units are being installed at the end of jetties in areas that are highly accessible. Uh, fishing line or fishing waste can simply be put straight in them rather than finding a way back to a bin that perhaps may be 50 metres away. 20 extra boxes will be installed over the coming year. Alicia Banner, 10 Eyewitness News. 
up to 80 metres under the sea. Depths of the Chagos archipelago never before seen by mankind, capturing an alien world with an abundance of marine life. Everywhere we dropped our cameras was an amazing diversity of marine life. On the reefs there are just some of the most pristine I've ever seen. Jessica Maywig and Tom Leticia from the University of WA joined 10 other scientists from across the globe on an expedition to the world's largest marine sanctuary, 500 kilometres south of the Maldives. It's the first time the protected area has been surveyed deeper than 15 metres. Um, they have two cameras sitting on a frame and we effectively dump them over the side of the boat and they sit there with a bait bag attached to an arm. Professor Maywig says Australia's marine ecosystems don't compare to what they found at Chagos. You didn't see just one grey reef shark, you saw six. You didn't see just one hammerhead shark, you saw six. So that was what the real big difference was. She says there's now an opportunity for Australia to create our own marine sanctuaries. And I think the lesson from the Chagos is that when you protect these areas with really good protection, you actually do see differences between the areas that are fished and the areas that are not fished. To uh, implement large sanctuary zones uh, would be very beneficial, I think, um, to the Western Australian coast. Alicia Banner, 10 News.